Hello, I'm Casey Dinges, Senior Managing Director for the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining us today for a discussion on the future of civil engineering education. My guest today is Kevin Hall, Professor of Infrastructure Engineering at the University of Arkansas and the Chair of the 2019 Civil Engineering Education Summit Program Committee. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you, Casey. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. The world around us is constantly changing and therefore so is the role of civil engineers. New special demands now challenge civil engineers to solve present and future problems. To keep up with this, we need to transform how we educate civil engineering students. Kevin, what do you think civil engineering education at the collegiate level does well right now? Well, I think we do a very good job of preparing students for the workplace in terms of their technical abilities. I think our emphasis on adhering to code, to the engineering problem solving method, the, the ability to think through a problem, I think these are all very big strengths of our current education system. What are some of the skills you think could be emphasized more as we look at the curricula going forward? One of the things that came out of the summit discussions was the absolute need to elevate the importance of what we call professional skills. Everything from communication skills to critical thinking to systems thinking, innovation, things like that. We think that, there, or at least the summit participants uh, discussed this at length to say that, that these are skills that engineers are going to need in even greater uh, amounts as we move forward. And you can kind of balance those, if you will, professional skills and the time it takes to educate with the time you need to educate on the technical side and the foundational side? We truly believe that we can. In fact, one of the, I think, misconceptions of a lot of folks is that civil engineering education is absolutely a zero-sum game. If you add something in, you must take something out. We believe that through innovation in education, we can begin to incorporate these professional skills into our current curricula and really not miss a beat. And even with the pressure in some states to have you know, fewer, fewer credit hours for graduation, it's still possible to find that kind of proper balance? We really believe it is. And many states, as you say, have actually mandated certain numbers of credit hours. But I think when you look at uh, items such as the body of knowledge version three, one of the things that we need to recognize is that the full educational preparation of a civil engineer does not have to totally occur at the, at the undergraduate level. In fact, the BOK3 uh, calls for increased education beyond the baccalaureate level. And I think we can, if we start to embrace that model a little more effectively, then we will have room for everything that we need to do. ASCE recently released a report from the 2019 Civil Engineering Education Summit. How do you think academia goes about implementing those recommendations? Well, I think, first of all, we had over 200 educators at this summit, and I think the word is getting out. I think when it reaches down to the rank and file faculty within civil engineering programs, the thing that they need to, to lock onto with this summit report is the idea of innovation. The idea that as the profession has changed and is changing for the future, so too should education systems change for the future. It's the idea that if we want innovation in our solutions, then we need to be innovative in how we educate uh, individuals going into the profession. So I think if, if people approach this with an open mind and with really with a mindset of innovation, how can I do things perhaps in a different way that's been done before, but to be more effective when I do it. And if you weren't facing enough challenges this year, the education model has drastically changed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. How does this affect the way we should be educating civil engineers? Well, it has been shown uh, in many, many programs that we can do a very credible job of educating students uh, remotely at distance. This certainly is another tool in our toolbox. 
Is it the absolute best way to do it? I think it depends on a lot of factors. It depends on the faculty member, the student, the topic. But I think what we're seeing, having been forced into this kind of mode almost full time, that I think you're going to see a lot of educators embracing this, even, even if we go back to what used to be considered normal, even if we go back to that, I think you're going to see a lot more hybrid type models. I think you're going to see a lot more online processes that are going on in the course of, of whatever normal is going to look like. That goes back to that innovation piece. How can we best use this to solve the problem? And I think as engineers, that's what we do. Are there new gaps created by the remote learning model? And are there positives that, begin, that can be taken forward even when students return to campus? Well, I think a very obvious gap would be the ability for truly hands-on work, particularly in the laboratories. Right. Many civil engineering programs have a number of laboratories that the students go through. And, and while simulations are very good, and simulations can be very good and very effective, sometimes there really is no substitute for truly putting your hands on something. Uh, we need, we're going to need to come up with solutions for that. So I, I think that is a, is a big topic that, that is, is being explored right now. I think advantage-wise, um, when you start looking at uh, things that people have suggested in the past, the flipped classroom, for example, where content is delivered remotely and then class time is spent uh, practicing those skills, I think you're going to see that really uh, gain new momentum now that we know that we can be effective doing that. I think one of the advantages that we're seeing now with this idea of remote learning is the idea that we can also begin to be a lot more cross-disciplinary in our approach to problem solving and engineering design. I think this affords us a tool now where we can truly bring in other professionals that civil engineers need to hear from. Perhaps it's the architect, perhaps it's a data scientist. And I think, I think the remote system really lends itself to bringing on more of those, what we, what we would have considered to be outside people to bring into our classes to gain that expertise for our students. That's really interesting. So that, that would really be a plus in your mind. Absolutely. Kevin, thank you for joining me today for this valuable discussion on the future of civil engineering education. Well, it was a pleasure to be here, and thank you, Casey, for giving us this opportunity. For more information on ASE's Interchange program, visit asce.org slash interchange. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you next time on the ASCE Interchange.